So today we're going to do adding and subtracting integers. Uh, and if you remember from what we talked about before, integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. So we're looking about adding and subtracting positive and negative uh, numbers. So let's first talk about adding. Um, and you approach it in two different ways. It depends if the two numbers you're adding have the same sign, as in they're both positive or both negative, or if they have different signs, so one's positive, one negative. So if they have the same signs, you add their absolute value and you keep the sign. So we've been doing this for all of our adding uh, from where we originally started. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 and 3 have the same sign. They're both positive. All right. Uh, 2, the absolute value of that is 2. And 3, the absolute value of that is 3. So we don't really necessarily have to think about it when it's something that we are already fluent in. So this ends up just being 5. Now, if I was to have something like negative 3 plus negative 12, then I would think about their absolute value. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. If I were to add those together, 3 and 12, I would end up getting 15. And because they're both negative, it ends up being 15, or negative 15, All right? So if they have the same signs, you simply just add what their absolute value would be and keep the sign. These two are both positive, so that's positive. These two are both negative, and so the answer has to then be negative. All right? Uh, so what if they have different signs? If they have different signs, you will subtract their absolute value. I'll just simplify absolute there. And then you will keep the sign, um, you'll keep the sign of the number that had the highest absolute value. So you keep the sign of the larger, a larger number. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. For example, if I have negative 10 plus four, all right, um, I'm going to subtract their absolute value. So I wanna think about it like the absolute value of negative 10 minus the absolute value of four. So the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. The absolute value of four is four. So it ends up being 10 minus four. And that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I look at these numbers. And so 10 minus four, as I'm thinking about is six. And the larger number is negative, or the larger absolute value is negative. So my answer is negative. All right. Uh, in terms of putting work down, this is really just kind of like your thought process here. Uh, let's look at another one. So again, when we add integers with different signs, we subtract their absolute value and then we keep the sign of the larger number. So here I have eight plus negative three. So again, in my head, I'm thinking that the absolute value of eight is eight. And I'll subtract the absolute value of negative three, which is three. 8 minus 3 is sort of what I'm thinking about here. That's 5. The larger number in this case is 8. And so because of that, it's positive. My answer is going to stay positive. All right? Okay. So that's adding. And we're going to have some practice with it today, and we're going to have practice with it again on Monday. So let's look at subtraction. Um, so subtraction, if we are subtracting integers,
in subtracting integers, we simply add the opposite. And so by changing our subtraction problem to an addition problem, then we can follow the same rules for adding integers that we just talked about. So in subtraction, you add the opposite. And in doing that, you, you never change the number that's listed first. So you keep the first number. And I'm just going to write, I know everybody thinks that's a hashtag, but really it, it also means number or pound. So um, in subtraction, I'm going to add the opposite. After I do that, then I follow my adding rules. So then I'm going to follow the adding rules. Or follow the addition rules. All right, so let's kind of look at it and see what that looks like. Four minus negative three. So to add the opposite, I'm gonna keep the first number the same. So I'll bring that down, four. I'm going to change my subtraction to addition. And then I'm gonna add the opposite of what I have. So the opposite of negative three is positive three. And then I just look at it as four plus three equals seven. All right, uh, next one. We'll just do a couple of these and then you'll have some practice with them tonight. So the next one is negative eight minus four. So again, I kind of follow the same thing. I keep the first one. I change the operation of subtraction to addition. And then I use the opposite. So this is a positive four, so I'm going to do a negative four. So in my adding rules, when I have the same sign, what we just looked at in our example earlier, if I have the same sign, I simply add their absolute value. So eight plus four, which is 12, and I keep that negative sign. So it's negative 12. All right? So negative eight minus four is negative 12. Uh, all right, let's do one more of these and then you can kind of have some practice. So three minus 14, same thing again. I bring my first one down so I keep it the same. I change my subtraction to an addition. I have a positive 14, so now I'm gonna change it to the opposite which is a negative 14. Now, with adding integers of different signs, again, we think about it as absolute value and subtraction. We put the bigger one first. So the absolute value of negative 14 minus the absolute value of three, that is on, uh, the thought process in our head. 14 minus three is 11. And because that first number is negative, my answer becomes negative. So it's negative 11. So when you do this tonight, what I really would like you to do is to not use a calculator. I know that we said that we like to let you use calculators for most things. This just happens to be one of the assignments. I would prefer you not use one. So good luck. Have a good weekend.